Today, I'm going to show you how I adapt math. Hi, teacher friends. Welcome back to the Adapted Classroom, and welcome back to another episode of How I Adapt That. In my classroom, we use the ULS math curriculum, and I typically just adapt whatever lesson is planned for the day. So these are the other ways that I've adapted math for my centers. I've decided to break it down into three categories, sorting, counting, addition. So there are two things I make sure we have whenever we do a math lesson. That's AAC and hands-on manipulatives. One of my favorite AT devices is this spinner from Enabling Devices and this switch button also from Enabling Devices. And I have color visual supports here that I'll just put on the spinner so students can make a choice. We're going to be sorting bears for this activity. So students can push the button and we'll say it landed on red. And then they'll go ahead and make another choice because we already have red, we'll say it's blue. So now we can have students sort the red and the blue bears, ask them to put all the blue bears together and ask them to put all the red bears together. I also have these buttons here that I got from Amazon. And when you push each button, it says a different color. It corresponds to the bear color that's on the button. So this one says yellow. yellow. Oh, I'm supposed to say blue, maybe it's out of batteries. Red. Red green. and green. For the sake of my next example, we're going to record orange and purple. <laughs> I have these two baking trays here, one with purple painter's tape and one with orange painter's tape. And the thing that I like about baking trays is that they're magnetic. So a fun way to sort is using magnet tiles. So you can give your students a whole tub of magnet tiles so they can sort them in the correct color and purple can go here. What's great about a magnetic task is that you can put these at a slant so students can access it better and they won't fall off. Another activity that you can do with colors is of course make patterns. I have a folder that I made here using Board Maker for my classroom. It's a make a pattern template, just blank squares across two pages that I laminated together so you can have the students make a pattern. So you can give students a choice using the buttons I have picture supports here for blue and green. You can model the pattern you want them to do. We can do an ABAB pattern. So blue, green. You try, what comes next? Blue, green, <laughs> and so on and so forth. We can also use this better for our counting activity. You can put different numbers on the spinner and then have students choose what number to count to. Okay, we're going to count to one. Sure, why not? I created this big poster board here. It's just the bottom part of a larger poster board and then I split it into 10 sections so that students can do one-to-one -one correspondence using different items. So in here, I have pumpkin. So the spinner landed on one, so let's count one pumpkin. These have Velcro on the bottom. So one, one pumpkin. I also have this step-by-step -step AAC button from AbleNet that I love using with math because you can record multiple messages and students can use it to count. Let me show you. So now when students push the button, it will count all the way to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I've had questions about this specific button. You have to purchase the one that says step by step with levels. Otherwise, you just get a single message button that just delivers a single message. But this one delivers multiple messages. So if we do the spinner again, landed on three this time, and we can say, okay, it landed on three. Let's put three pumpkins. One, two, three. Oops. Three. Will you help me count three? And then students can use the button to count. One, two, three. Three. I have another example of an activity where you can incorporate counting colors and fine motor. I got these big fuzzy pipe cleaners on Amazon. I like them because they're bigger than your usual pipe cleaner. And you can have students choose a color. And I have different colored beads here. You can have students choose a color so they can choose what bead they would like to bead on the fuzzy pipe cleaner. So let's say that we chose yellow. yellow. We can use the spinner. Then we can use the spinner. We'll say it landed on three. 
and then we can ask the students to bead three yellow beads onto the pipe cleaner. So we'll go one, two, three. Then we can ask students, how many beads do you have on the pipe cleaner? One, two, three. Three beads on the pipe cleaner. These beads are from one of those lace and bead games. I just find that the fuzzy pipe cleaners are more sturdy, so it's easier for students to handle. <laughs> so now we'll get into some addition activities. I love big dice. <laughs> I love using big dice in my classroom for addition. I got these big dice from Lakeshore. And for this example, we'll take a red die and we'll take a blue die. I'll have a student roll a die and say, oh, you got six. And I'll have another student roll another die and you got five. What happens when we add six and five together? And the student with the blue die can count blue bears and go one, two, three, four, five, six blue bears. And the other student can count five red bears. One, two, three, four, five. How many bears do we have all together? And then we can use that big chart to count all the way to 11. We can change our button to count all the way to 11. And we can model counting and adding for our students. So for this example, I'll go ahead and count all the way to 12. So we'll go. One. Two. Eleven. Eleven bears. We have eleven bears all together. I love these dice. I love these dice. You can also do Billy rolled six and Sarah rolled five. Who has more? And you can compare each number. Another fun thing that I discovered here on Instagram from another teacher is Zingo. So it's a fun way to work on fine motor. You just slide it forward and slide it back. You can have a student count out 10, another student count out seven, and you can compare the numbers, you can add the numbers. If you wanted to play the Zingo way, you would just take the numbers that come out and cover your cards until you get bingo. So this one is seven, and then you could have the student cover seven. So that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. I'll be back tomorrow with more ways that you can adapt your classroom to fit the needs of your students. Bye.